Welcome to the Wolverine Digest Podcast, the best spot for objective and authentic coverage of Michigan athletics. If you want open dialogue, honest opinions, and in-depth coverage of the maize and blue, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's your host, Brandon Brown. Wow. It's, uh, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been well over a month. Uh... I've been a little ill. I've been trying to find a crew. What do I call them? A crew? A panel? A bunch of yahoos? Something. I don't know. You'll see momentarily here. Super excited to be back on doing a live show again, doing the podcast again. Definitely going to be an every Wednesday thing. Maybe ramp it up a little bit um, since spring football is going on right now and the spring game is coming uh, April 20th. But for now, it will just be one day a week. Um, and I'm super excited to announce that I have somewhat of a, a staff. Now, I have one person. I'm going to introduce him first that's going to be helping me out much more regularly than the other guys. He's not an unfamiliar name. Uh, it's funny. I'll let him tell the story when he jumps on here. But I'm super excited to be working with Mr. Eric Rudder again. This goes way back. Eric, tell the quick the quick Facebook memory story that, that happened like randomly the other day when you and I first talked again for the I don't, dude it's been a long time since we even shot a it's text been a call. minute yeah hey everyone how are you doing um a couple days ago i was on facebook and got a little notification about a memory from 11 years ago i was letting all my family know that i'd be writing for the m block with brandon and to stay tuned for some more updates and who knew that 11 years later would be taking us to this place with michigan as national champions it's it, it's beautiful thanks for having me brandon yeah, dude, for sure. So Eric is going to be part time. He's he's living up in Traverse City, so he's not in the Ann Arbor area, but he is going to be around in the fall, hopefully shooting some games yeah. and doing some more involved stuff like that. And in the meantime, kind of part time writing. Eric's been a he's a phenomenal writer, really good with the camera. So I'm excited to see about all that stuff. And hopefully if we can keep him in the country, because this dude is like a rambling man. He's like half gypsy or something. If you go to his Instagram, he's got some of the craziest pictures I've ever seen. And you're going to the Amazon in like a couple weeks. So you're, you're going to be gone for a little sure. while here, but um, super excited to have Eric back in the fold again. Yeah. Like a, dude, you were just a, a, a baby. How uh, 10 years ago, what were you like? 20, 22, 20, 20. Yeah. 20 years old, fresh, still in so, college. Yeah. That's crazy it's to think about. So, absolutely so super excited to have eric back in the fold and he's going to be with me most of the time whenever he can so glad that he could uh jump on board and be involved another person coming on board here he's not i can't say that he's familiar but he's done at least one other show before uh two seasons ago when chris and i were out you know making our rounds talking to fans kissing babies doing that whole thing at the penn state game we were parked right across the street we were busy Probably had a little bit too much to drink. Didn't really want to do the show. We grabbed our buddy Zach, who is a big Penn State fan, and our buddy Nick and said, go do the show. And uh, I, I can't believe Nick's back doing the show. Nick, how did that how'd that show go, if you could recall, from two years ago? From what I can recall, um, I did most of the heavy lifting. Uh, <laughs> Zach happened to be there. I kept trying to throw it to him to get some good commentary out of him, and it was mostly just some – some one-liners trying to, you know, justify Penn State even being in that game. But uh, it was <laughs> wild. Yeah, you guys just kind of threw us in there. It was my first podcast thing. I didn't know what to do with my hands. I was just yeah. kind of <laughs> in there. So, well, so Nick, and, Nick and Zach are both teachers, so I thought, like, oh, that'll be all right. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's learned. It's different. It's weird. I've talked about this a hundred times. Like, I could get together with Nick and Eric and whoever else, and we could talk football, and it's like the most easy, natural thing. And there's something about when you jump on here and do it, you just start kind of acting out of character, and it's, it just takes a little time to get comfortable and really launch into it. But yeah. I'm excited that Nick's the casual here. element. Yeah, the casual element kind of goes away, but I'm excited Nick's here. I mean, you know, we went to a really small high school in New Lothar, but we're talking about a dominant athlete here in Mr. Nick Kennedy. So, uh, <laughs> just put is. a bow, just put a put a bow on a on a season last night. He's an assistant varsity basketball coach for the girls program, and almost, dude, almost made it to the Brez. So, unfortunately, you lost and you're here, but like that, that's still a pretty cool run. Yeah, four points short, but you know, good season nonetheless. And you forgot, uh, I'm the only one on this panel who has won a state title as a coach. Oh. 
Wow. Throwing, yep. Okay, throwing a little shot out. Fourth I wonder, grade, fourth grade girls <laughs> basketball, man. You got it. <laughs> That's right. A, title's a title. Title is a title. All right. <laughs> Up next, another. I can't believe that three people from New Lothrop are even allowed to like have a podcast. Four, if we get into my last, oh, the last guest, we'll, we'll we'll be there momentarily. But um, some of you guys who have been following following the podcast and following Wolverine Digest and watching along on uh, YouTube or Facebook or wherever might recognize the name. He's been watching us a lot. Been a friend of mine for a really long time. Supportive and really knows his stuff. Another. Dare I say, dominant athlete from New Lothar, Mr. Dan Genro, also joining us. Dan, I like Dan because he says exactly what he's thinking, and he's not really going to care too much about what we think about that. And, and I like I that. am usually thinking something. <laughs> you need that. You won't find a lot of topics I don't have an opinion on. There you go, and that, I think that's important. I mean, I've been that way through most of my career covering Michigan. It got me into trouble sometimes. Sometimes it got me out of trouble, but I think that's valuable. Um, Dan, the three of us, myself, Nick and Dan, we graduated together. We've known each other for I don't, 25 years, probably. I mean, if you, if you go back to when we first all met, it's been a long time. So, um, pretty cool to have that. Yeah. There's CJ Frazier. You see CJ throws some F bombs out there. So it's like, it's so <laughs> fun to allow. Um, but yeah, so another, another regular CJ's actually done an episode of the show before too. And the, when the speaker went out, I had to jump off and CJ jumped on. So anyway, and, uh, oh, boy, last but not least, the only person here who has known me longer than these guys, literally known me every second of my entire life, uh, has known Dan and Nick also for a really long time uh, because we all grew up together and have known each other for a long time. I'm a little, I'm a little concerned, but uh, he's here for at least this first episode in the reboot. It's the original, the original Coach Brown. My dad, Scott Brown, <laughs> also in New Lothrop. So I, Nick technically isn't isn't in our hometown, but pretty close. We are using we are currently using all of the bandwidth for our <laughs> area. Yeah. That so is probably uh, true. If uh, <laughs> Dad, I don't. I mean, do you have do you have anything you want to say right now? I mean, I know we're going to hear from you. Don't do any of the product pitching you were doing earlier. We don't need that. Uh, right I, I won't do any of that. I won't do any of that at all. So. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, you've already made one mistake, son, on your, on your first pro body. I didn't turn it that. Up, or did I? You said 25 years? It's like 35 years. Yeah, it's probably 35 years. 35, yeah. Nick and I, we used to ride the bus together on like first grade. <clears throat> yep. Wild. Made up our own songs. Just had, just had to clear that up. You are That's going to be... 40 this year so yeah that's true on. nick turned 40 last year dan's got one coming up next month i'm a little later on in the summer yeah crazy right. so we've got all right we've got cj in the house mm -hmm. uh my mom and my uncle and i think that might be the only people what no there's over 200 people in here right now which is incredible uh again awesome. thank you guys for tuning awesome. in i know it's been a long <laughs> time since i've been on here since jim harbaugh was hired with the chargers um you know with chris and i going our Boo. separate ways it took a little Boo. time to, my dad has an opinion on the Jim Harbaugh thing, which I didn't know about until just a little bit ago. But it took a little while because I wanted to find someone who was going to be able to be here with me most of the time. Again, hopefully that's Eric. He does have some things coming up, and that's cool. And then I wanted to kind of find a panel where I could bring some people in that I, you know, I trust their opinion. I trust where they're from, what they're about. Again, that's the new Lothrop roots that I, I, I come to know and love. And, uh, this is the ragtag group. So if you if you hate it, well, I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but I think it's going to go all right. And uh, it's cool just to be back talking Michigan football, as Eric said. Yeah. Dude, they're national champs. Absolutely. I mean, like, that's sweet. It's something I didn't know if I would ever really see in my life. Dan, I know you were at the Rose Bowl. Did you make it to the championship game, too? No. Or just the Rose? Okay, just so the, the Ro Rose, Bowl, yeah. Rose Bowl was incredible. That was one of the – I did a, me and Chris did a show there, and then – not long after Jim Harbaugh takes the Chargers job, then I did a show by myself, and that was it. That was the last time I was on. So obviously a ton of things have happened. Um, I, I'm not going to get into tons of specifics about Sharon Moore's staff because it's it's kind of been established at this point. He hired a bunch of new guys, tons of positions to fill. Um, but there were a couple things that happened throughout that that I kind of want to get your guys' opinion on, and then we'll talk about the basketball program, then we'll, we'll finish with football as well. Because even though it's like – 
so far off in the future. That's still what everybody wants to talk about is football. And the spring game is only about a, it's a month away exactly to the day. So the, the thing I want to talk about with Sharon Moore staff is the fact that he got younger, more diverse, you know, some of the older dudes have moved on. A lot of them went with Jim Harbaugh. I think that's why my dad is upset over there. Okay, let's let's start there, I guess, Dad, because I know <laughs> you want to. Ryan Ryan. Yeah, I know you want to, Dad. Why why yeah. does that bother? I mean, like, it's Jim Harbaugh's job to do the best job with the Chargers. So why? I mean, he took really good coaches with him. What's wrong with that? My my opinion is, if you if you're a Michigan man, you leave Michigan alone. You go find your own dudes. Okay. I mean, let them, let them, let them continue on with the championship. Yeah. Maybe garner two or three. I would, if he would have, if he would have won two or three more and then want to go back to the NFL, I I could live with that, but to be one and done, like all the, you know how I feel about the one and done. Yeah. Don't even have to college basketball anymore because of that. But there was a really, kind of crazy narrative and it's it's weird to even ask the question because obviously Michigan went 15 and 0 won a national championship but did Jim Harbaugh like did he actually leave the program in better shape it seems like a crazy question to ask but like did he did he leave the program in better shape than it was when he when he got there I know that's nuts but like yeah yeah I think when he got here sure absolutely I think so yeah, you can't take anything away from what they what they did with him there. Although, yeah. championship year he did miss a few games, so yeah, yeah, yeah three times CFP right. finalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I right. mean, you know, you make it to the playoffs three times, you win the whole thing. I mean, that's, but it's it's crazy to think about the the challenges that Sharon Moore has now, yeah. um, because of what Harbaugh did on the way out, and it's yeah, put him in a big I, hole. I don't think there's a lot of people that disagree with my dad. I mean, I, I really don't, but it's, it's hard. Like those were, I see Douglas here in the comments saying those were his guys. Like he, he got them at Michigan. So he, he brought just, them here, right? <laughs> yeah. He, he, he kind of has Good. a right, you know, there's, well, there's they're, a, they're, they're, they're Harbaugh guys in, at some juncture. They're either yeah. a Jim Harbaugh or a John Harbaugh guy. They just <laughs> yeah. kind of, they yeah. just kind of no, swap I, them and ship them across the country to yeah. each other. I yeah. do see that aspect of it. I do. So it's tough. I mean, I like Harbaugh they, wants to go there and have the best staff available, and he's using guys that he's familiar with and trying to. I don't know. Jim Harbaugh doesn't really have like human emotions anyway, so I don't know if he really like any of this even really registers. He's just like football guy, football yeah. guy, and like yeah, that's right. what he does. But I don't that's know. Kind of, I think you don't, uh, you don't got to change your opinion though. I mean, you have the you're, as a fan, you can be mad yeah. about it. He can take him, and yeah. you can be mad. I mean, you're a Michigan fan, not a Jim Harbaugh fan. So I can, you know, absolutely. I do have a, a question about that take, right. though, that I found a little bit interesting. It was the caveat of winning multiple national championships. Now, that would be a wonderful reality were that to happen at Michigan. But I'm not sure how much that changes on a material level with Jim taking his coaches to the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, why would that matter? One or two or three? Like, he, he did it. Like, after one... To be honest, I was four years old when Michigan won in 1997, <laughs> so this was a very new thing for me. I, it's it's the seminal moment of my life, perhaps. Um, it's everything I wanted and more. Uh, I can't ask for more from Jim. Perhaps I have a, a younger, you know, perspective on it, so it's different. But that's that was my perception. I know when we were talking about it earlier, Eric was like, "Oh, love that guy. He could do no wrong. <laughs> love him." And my dad's like, "No." No, he like he stole. He took a he took from Michigan. He did this. He did that. So I don't know. It's an interesting co topic. And steal I steal is a very difficult word to use with Jim <laughs> and Michigan lately. Maybe borrow. yeah. Well, even even uh oh him and John Harbaugh were doing an interview and they said something like steal and John was like don't don't use the word steal when you're talking <laughs> to Jim right now. I thought that was pretty That's funny. Probably why but... it was in my mind. Well, writing and, and, story and, about that. And yeah. in Jim Harbaugh's defense, how much of just his dealings with the NCAA? Oh yeah, and, and NIL and all the other headaches that are that are with it. You got this NFL opportunity where you don't have to deal with all that kind of stuff. You got agents who are taking care of all the money and and all the endorsements and deals of, of that nature. He doesn't have to worry about a, a second or a third string running back coming to him and saying, "Hey, I need a hundred grand to be your second or third string running back." It's hard to really argue with that decision. If you know, if I'm Jim Harbaugh, I, I might do the same thing. Yeah, well, and not just Jim, but the guys that went with him too. Right. Same yeah. Thing. Yeah, two, two, what, yeah, CJ's point, right? 
they didn't go against their will. Like they, exactly. you know, <laughs> they had it. They had an option to stay. True. That's true. Maybe. They, they well, probably got a raise too, right? We don't know that for sure. Actually, like, does Sharon did Sharon Moore want to keep Mike Elston? Maybe not. I don't. I don't know that. But like. You know, a new coach comes in. He might want some. I, I guarantee some of them would have. Ben Herbert would have been allowed to stay. Um, yeah. Steve, Steve Klinkscale would have been allowed to stay because actually it looked like he was going to stay. And then kind of last minute he had informed the team that he was leaving and he left. So it's kind of a weird topic. I think there's probably pretty big groups who think both ways. They feel like Jim, you know, stole from the program and left them with an empty cupboard. And on the other hand, you know, he he did win a title and kind of ran off into the sunset in like the perfect way. Like, what what more could he have done? So yeah, there's, I don't know. there's pros, there's, really there's pros the and cons. Yeah. Sorry. There's um, pros and cons for all that. Because of that, this is this is another uh, another another area of division that I've seen over the last month. Again, not doing a show, and this is interesting for like Dan and Nick and myself because of our age. Again, Eric was a little younger. Dad has some some older favorite players too. But now with the new staff, Mike Hart is gone. And a lot of people were like, what? How do you let the legendary number 20, how do you let him get out of there? And we've heard personal reasons. You know, he had some health stuff. He, like, let's be honest. He was looked over for the job. He wanted to be a head coach. I don't know if he was even in the running for it at Michigan. Then he also didn't get the OC job. Was there some animosity with him and Sharon? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying there was, but... He didn't get those jobs, and those are jobs that he's wanted. So I guess just initial thoughts on, again, Dan, Nick, and yeah. myself watched Mike Hart in his heyday. I mean, we we love the guy. I mean, from yeah. a player standpoint and what he did at Michigan and his lore and his status, and then he comes back to Michigan to coach, and you just kind of love it by default. And he did a pretty good job. Wasn't the most dynamic recruiter, but he seemed to do a lot with whoever he had. And now well, he's gone. Thoughts on that. And he loved it here too. So I, you know, I feel like we'll know those answers to your yeah. questions as soon as we find out. Like if he lands somewhere else, then there's yeah. animosity between him and Sharon. You know, all those things are probably true. If he doesn't, then he's got health reasons, right? He's got health, yeah. you know, whatever it was with the health side of it. I feel as like of that's, right now, it's gonna be pretty telling. As of right now, he's still on the market. He hasn't been hired by anywhere right. else. I'm, I don't yeah. even know if he's interviewed or not. Uh, I, I know heard in a the past rumor of any of that. Yeah, in the past he had been he'd interviewed for stuff like while he yeah. was at Michigan before he got to Michigan he was trying to climb the ladder and now yeah now he's kind of in the state of limbo a little bit. Um, That's a good point. I don't know. I I, I just think it's, it's we'll get into the Jawan Howard stuff too. It's like it's it's like this weird area when you've got a dude that's so beloved as a player and then he comes on as a coach whether he does really good or he doesn't do so good like you still. Dad, I don't know, like you're older. I know you watched Mike Hart, so he wasn't in, you know, in your formative years like maybe he was for us. But is it just like it's just a business, whatever, he'll be fine? Or is it like, do you feel like, damn, that's Mike Hart, man? Like, take care of your own. No, you had, you had a good point about him. We've talked about it before. Uh, him being overlooked probably has more to do with it than anything. Yeah. In, his, in his mind, you know, maybe – Maybe he wasn't the best guy for the job, and and you guys you guys have all talked about Sharon wanting his own crew, if you want to put a put a name on it. So it's hard you to could probably what he, probably what I, I would I would say more yeah. he's he's probably more upset with Michigan more than Sharon. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, Nick, you just said. I mean, like you know, Blake Corum was a pretty big recruit. He wasn't like incredible. But Hassan Haskins was like a nobody on the recruiting trail, right? Karan Higdon, and what did they turn into? Before Mike Hart. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it, we talked about it a little bit the other day. You could see the 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 difference in their running style after Mike Hart got there. Mm, it, yeah. They almost looked like a version of Mike Hart. When you watch yeah. Mike Hart back when we all watched him religiously, yeah. he was a very patient runner. He'd get up to the line, he'd find a hole, make a jump cut, and then hit it. And that's exactly what Blake Corm would do. Now Blake Corm's a freak. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's the guy in the weight room. You know, more than anybody else, he's got amazing talent, but how much of that also is coaching and teaching those guys to be more patient, find the hole, fo follow your blocker. Like you well, know, you, before my car was here, we didn't have that. You saw like, two phenomenal examples of it from Donovan Edwards in the title game. I mean, like that's, right. yeah, they, they're not the same player and they're, you know, both probably a little more gifted physically than my car was the both Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. But yeah, I mean, I've, I was just talking, I think I was talking to my dad about this. Maybe you guys too. when we got together over the weekend, do you think that running back, running back coaches, do you think that they 
I don't want to say like they have the least to coach. That sounds bad. But like out of all the positions on the on the football field, isn't running back yeah. maybe the most just in you either got it or you don't. That's like there's so many say. things you can learn yeah. at the other spots, Brandon, but I don't to, know. To Nick's original point, like I I don't have any doubt in my mind that he's a good running backs coach, but we're talking about moving up the ladder. I mean, what yeah. does it say? What is this? Like Jim wasn't trying to take him to San Diego, right? Yeah. You know, it doesn't look like Sharon maybe unless it's truthfully a health issue where he just yeah, yeah, yeah. away. It doesn't look like, you know, Sharon was screaming to keep him there. So, you know, maybe they just don't look at him like a guy who could be a head coach. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. I'm not in and lock board. I, just, thought to me, he could. I mean, I feel like he's probably a pretty good running backs coach, but maybe not OC or head coach material. Hey, we've seen that at different levels with different guys. Um, and I think, Eric, you were just about to say what my, my, my next topic was. It'd be a good segue. I think yeah, I know where you're do going. Do you think this is a good time to shout out Tony Alford and who Sharon Moore picked to replace Mike Hart and how prolific of a recruiter he was at Ohio State? I believe he signed nine, eight or nine top 300 running backs during his time coaching for the Buckeyes. Yeah, and before that, he was at uh, Notre Dame coaching receivers, which I didn't even know. He coached Michael Floyd to back-to-back 1,000-yard receiving seasons, and he became a first-round pick. So, like, the dude can coach. He's a phenomenal recruiter. He's from Ohio. He's, I mean, he's just, you know, I, yeah, it's weird when you take a dude from Ohio State, but we saw it the other way. You know, Greg Madison went from Michigan yeah. to Ohio State. Al Washington did the same thing. Yep. It's strange, yeah. <laughs> but if they're good coaches and good recruiters, like, I'm all for it. Um, I'm, I'm all for it, especially stealing somebody from Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know. I'm sorry, Ohio. <laughs> I, don't ever addition, say, I don't ever say state. Addition by subtraction, if you want to call it that. I mean, I, I don't know if Ohio State has hired a new running backs coach yet. I'm not sure. I'm sure they'll get somebody good. That's a that's a premier program. They'll get oh, somebody. But sure. like, it it hurts a lot of people. This is where I, this is where I was going to go to. I had this written down. Is is it wrong, even if you believe it in your heart, to say that Michigan upgraded? Because I actually think they did. I think they did. Yeah, yeah. and I love you, Mike Hart. You and I thought he out, did a good you, job. You pointed to one thing when you talked about both guys separately. One was a not a great recruiter, and one is a great recruiter. So even yeah. if they're equal as a running backs coach, that's an upgrade. Yep. Yeah, right. That's, that's, that's kind of how I look at it. And you um, and I talked about it a little bit last week, Brandon. That there might be some of the same stuff going on at Ohio State with him that maybe yeah. went on here. Like he got look, he don't he didn't get boosted up to OC. You know they what hired two different ones this off season and he didn't get mentioned. Yeah, so he's that's been there. Probably, and he's been there eight years, twice as long as right? I mean, so yeah, that's probably a big yeah. part of why Sharon was able to steal him out of there. But I don't, I don't think it's because I don't think they look down on him as a coach. I mean, I think they think he's a good coach there. Well, my did. question, my well, question, I, they'll talk smack now, but I got <laughs> yeah. a question with that though too. Like, is he is Alford also a guy who maybe just wants to be a position coach, or does yeah, he want to move up? There's some that. guys that. Like, look at what Chip Kelly just did going yeah, to Ohio yeah. State to be an offensive coordinator. He he just said, I'm, I don't want a head coach. I want to actually coach. Yeah. I want to actually work with the kids. One of the and, craziest and moves coach. of this offseason, I think. Yeah, it, yeah. It's crazy. There's some guys where that's that's their niche. That's their thing. They know what their fit is. They know what they're good at. And that's just where they want to be. Yeah. You're also going to see more and more of that as this NIL transfer portal stuff gets yeah. crazier and crazier. I mean, you know, Saban famously has now said, like, it used to be, and whether you think Saban was towing the line or not, which I don't think he was, <laughs> he had his his advantages for certain reasons, but yeah. the, he did get the results. It's, you know, when you get the best player at every position every year, results are pretty easy to come by. But the point is he did get guys, developed them, put them in the league, took care of them. And now he said, mm-hmm. like, that's not even, they don't even care. They don't want to know about playing time. They don't want to know about development. They don't want, they want to know how much am I getting paid? What kind of deals are you going to get me? Or I'm going to leave or what, you know, like. Even a guy like Saban, who's won it all a billion times. So short. Yeah, they just they forget about like what yeah. what they did last year and what could be on the horizon if they just stay put. This Caden, have you guys seen this Caden Proctor stuff? The kid that went from Alabama Wild. to Iowa and now is back at he went. He's from Iowa, okay. In high school, he committed to Iowa. Then he flipped to Alabama, went to Bama as a true freshman, started every game last year on the O line, went in the transfer portal, <laughs> went to Iowa. Got a big old chunk of a hundred thousand dollars from like the uh, the NIL fund, and now is back at Alabama and doesn't have to give any of it back. Yeah, insane! I, I never heard that. That's, insane! That's that is insane. <laughs> they're Sounds gonna like have Robert. to get. To, they're gonna have to Don't get. Don't think it's the last time you'll hear of it either. Yeah, these guys. They're gonna have to get to a point where th- this NIL stuff's gonna have to be regulated. These guys. They're gonna have to sign them to contracts. They're yeah. gonna have to because other. It's just. Yeah. 
like that story right there, like you just said, is going to be the norm. And well, it's, it's also gonna be crazy. It's also going to start to shrivel up the guys who legitimately want to give money to their alma maters and help yeah. out. What if like right. Right. I just gave a hundred grand to that kid? He's not even here. Like, what what am I doing? Like, you know, it's just it's just bad. It's bad in a lot of directions, and that that's one of the like Quinn Ewers kind of did something similar. He went to Ohio State because the the laws in Texas didn't allow him to do A, B, and C. And then he leaves Ohio State and goes to Texas with a big bag of money. Uh, like I don't know, yeah. man. That just that yeah. seems a little bit crazy. But um, yeah, to Nick's point, like th- it's not a bad living to make like three quarters of a million dollars coaching running backs and just being really good at it. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> I don't know. Did we, did we lose Eric? Eric looks like we might have lost here. He's he's frozen. He's frozen. Well, he's just I'm gonna, really, really focused on what we're saying right now. I'm going <laughs> to take him out, and we'll bring him back in when he's good to go. Um, yeah, so it's just a it's a weird thing when you see a guy come from Ohio State right to Michigan. But, again, I, I do – you know, I, I'm trying to see what the comments are saying. Did people – did people uh, – Oh, did it. Did people threaten me when I said that I think it's an upgrade over Mike Hart? Because I actually think that it is. Um, I, 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 agree didn't, I didn't see any of that. You see it I here. Agree. You, I agree. You, you can love him, but he wasn't a great recruiter. He yep. he he didn't get out there and really really get after it. Um, yeah. And Tony Alford, by all accounts, does exactly that. And what that will end up look. And it's funny. I was talking. At, uh, you know, <laughs> shooting a few texts to Sharon Moore the other day. Um, but I did, and he actually responded. I couldn't believe it. He usually doesn't, but he did this time, and he he said he's a beast. He's like he's a beast. He's he's an incredible recruiter. I thought they may have over because Tony Alford and Sharon both have a history at Louisville, but they didn't actually overlap. But they've known each other for a really long time, and so he's super happy about the hire and everything. And you know, all accounts are that he's he's just relentless on the recruiting trail, and because of that. He knows Donovan Edwards really well because Donovan Edwards was considering like Ohio State and Georgia were probably like his other two schools. And by the and the kid that Michigan just got this past year, Jordan Marshall was Mr. Football in Ohio. Like in Ohio, Ohio yeah, State there, was all over. A lot of, yeah, there's going to be there's, a lot of overlap. There's a recruit those right now too yep. that that he you know was leaning towards Ohio State. And now it sounds like he's still he's giving a look to Michigan. Stick yeah, with his position coach. Yeah, I can't yeah, think of his so, name right now though. Uh, yeah, Derek. Eric with the NIL, in his iPad and it froze. Come on yeah, back. With the I, NIL, with the NIL money, you got to have the best uh, recruiters you can get. Yeah, because yeah, cause it, I mean it'll that's come down. If if there's five schools offering a kid a million dollars, then you better have a re- recruiter that can get. Well, you just got to have a million. No, you just have to have a million and one. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. true. <laughs> it feels like the million the, in a the car. time yeah. of building a team like this year's Michigan team gone might be in the yep. past you know building real program with program guy i mean obviously they're bringing in some transfer portal guys but you know guys that just buy into the program from day one like this was a different kind yeah. of team and they're i just gonna be good bro. they're gonna be good yeah I, how do you how do you build like that nowadays yeah it's it's Free tough agency. man it's <laughs> real tough i mean you you're you're gonna have like we had last year you're gonna have the graduate transfers who who maybe could be second round pick on the O line who are going to say, you know what, I'm going to go play one year at Michigan and bump my stock up and I'm going to be a first round pick. Yeah. That's what Michigan's yeah. going to be. That's yeah. why keeping I, Sharon Moore was such a big deal because yeah, you're going to have I, that, that foundation right there on that line of we're going to have got, we're going to have dudes coming in here every year that want to play for this guy. This is a great segue. I don't have this written down, but I liked what Nick just said right there. And then we're going to go to basketball and then we're going to close out with some Sharon Moore and football stuff. He just said hiring Sharon Moore was the right thing to do. What was that the right thing to do? We're talking about another guy who no head coaching experience. I like I'm not gonna do the he it feels like Juwan Howard thing. I'm not I'm not gonna do that. But he's taking over like he was just throwing the keys to a Ferrari and he's never driven one before. Like yeah. I had pause about it, even though I love Juwan Howard. I love the fact like he could do no wrong in my eyes, but I'm like, he's never been a coach ever. Like that's a problem. Sharon, Sharon did coach four games. He had four games this year. It's a little yeah, bit, with but, Jim but that's not. Team. I mean, you get some credit for that, but three big. That's not the same thing. Three big that's not, games. That's three not hiring games. a staff. That's not running practice right. day in and no, day out. That's, that's not. But I don't know. It, I, I I love Sharon. I've known him personally since he was at CMU. I think he's a star. Right. I think he's super bright. He's got all the pieces you need to be a good coach. But it's a. Uh, 
it's a big deal jumping from where he well, went to to where he's at right out of the gate and taking yeah. over the national chain. Like, actually, I don't know if it's ever been done, to be honest. Like, I haven't done the research, but I don't know really? if a person who's never been a head coach has ever taken oh, over right. the national champion. Yeah. I don't know if that's ever happened. Right. So, oh. well, and to stick with your Ferrari analogy, like, yeah, he was handed the keys to a Ferrari and he was able to keep all his other teams from coming and stealing the wheels and the fenders and the, all the parts. <laughs> yeah. But when he drives there. the car, now we got to well, find out if he can drive the car. That's right? just it. You, 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 better, the guy, you better learn how to drive a stick really quick. That's right. just, <laughs> you just took the words out of my mouth, Scott. Nice, Scott. I, Cause I was going to say, do you keep the guy who's been watching the guy drive the Ferrari or do you bring yeah. in somebody else who's, who has yeah. no idea what's going on there and said, Hey, yeah. you take the keys. They're, he has so zero idea how to true. drive. This it. roster they're, would look very different if they didn't keep him. That that's no doubt. Yeah. They, I, I have no doubt about that. I mean, you lost what one real part? Yeah, I, I think, mean, yeah, Keon Sab is probably Sab the only is, one you're really gonna miss. Of him, like nobody that was really expected to contribute this year. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. So, I mean, for for the way the way the transfer portal is, just back and forth, like for Michigan yeah. to lose one guy in the fallout of Jim Harbaugh being hired. Pretty impressive. Is, very there, impressive. There. There's Eric. Welcome back. Hey, now we're in right. different spots. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, that's that's a great point, Nick. Like, yeah, he's never been a head coach, but he's he saw every single thing the entire season and knows what Jim did and how he did it, and he'll put he'll certainly put his own spin on things. But so I guess that's that's really what it comes down to. What's more valuable, having that huge bag of knowledge and all the things that go along with the program you're inheriting, or having the experience of running an entire program before which he doesn't have? I mean, it's a it's a debate you can go back and forth on. I mean, like there would have been worse there would have been worse options, no doubt. Do you do you think there's better options? Like, if, is there another guy out there? Like, if you could hire anybody. Like who's somebody that you'd be like? I'll take that guy instead of Sharon. Like I'll take him. Like I mean Saban. Okay, I don't know whatever. But like, is there a guy that Dan Dan Campbell, Dan, <laughs> Motor City Dan Campbell? <laughs> yeah, bites so, kneecaps. I take that guy. <laughs> yeah. So if you, if it's hard to answer, because that's always the question you get. I mean, for years now, I'd be like Jim Harbaugh wants to go to the NFL, and it might be time to go. And the first thing out of people's mouth, who are you gonna get then? Like, well, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of dudes that coach football, man. Like, you find yeah, that somebody. That is legitimate. That is legitimate. It is. It is. And this year, you know, Sharon will be the guy. And I'm, you know, barring whoever it would have been, it was going to be tough, though. Him. Like, that's also something you have to consider. Yeah. Next year's yeah. going to be tough. Even if Jim stayed, we were going to lose, what, 17, 18 guys to the NFL? Yeah. yeah. So, it would have been tough if he stayed. Yeah. Eric, now that you're back and functional. Yeah. I think a big part of answering your question of who do you replace Jim with, it's something that kind of extends to the program as a whole on a larger scale. Does it have to be a Michigan man still, or can they look outside of kind of that window, those yeah. umbrella of coaches already? And it's something that Ward Manuel, he's going to have to answer that if there's in a different direction. But with Juwan Howard right now, yeah. he, there's not you a lot of be a Michigan man. Well, you got to be a Michigan man. Tell him, Scott. <laughs> I just what I got the so, last time we got one that wasn't. I know I got yeah. so sick of that sentiment though covering this program for ten years. I'm like, it, yeah. there's, thing, there's though, so Brandon. many good dudes out there. Yeah. There are, but think of think of your fan base and how big your fan base is. Yeah, like if it's that important to your fan base and you have that many people that are just die hard, love your team. Like, look at how everything just coalesced around the Michigan, the a Michigan man. You know, I know bringing it back to. The promised land, like it's hard to those who stay. The whole I know, yeah. I know, man. The I tradition know. Tradition of it, like what? What else do we have in college football? If we don't have that stuff. Yeah, I. It does feel more important in football, yeah. especially at a place like Michigan, than it does for basketball. But I just remember thinking, like, God, dude, there's so many good coaches out there that may not even get a look because they don't have some deep Michigan roots and. I just feel well, like you're kind of handcuffing yourself a little bit when you do that. Come but. be an assistant for a while and get those. Yeah. Ones. That's what they got to do. Work your right, way up yeah. the ladder. Right. So, um, I don't know. I didn't, Dad, I guess I didn't realize you were that, you felt that strongly about it having to be a Michigan man. Well, I do. I do. I really do. Next point of, I guess, who who would you, it's yeah, like, I was, what? Rich I was Rod, right? I mean, Rich that's Rod. who you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that as Nick said it. I was thinking that. Thinking I don't that know exact if that's emblematic of what a non Michigan man will do to the program. I think exactly. that's a special circumstance where Rich Rod 
his program fell apart defensively. It was, it was dude. He was related to his Michigan. It was so bad. He was so coveted though. Like Bama tried to hire him the year before. He turned him yeah. down. Went back to West Virginia. And then Michigan got him. So I mean, like when they hired him, that was the best. It was a home run. I mean, they're like, I remember dude, us oh. being excited. Oh, yeah, I mean, he I goes from a place like about it. West Virginia where now he's going to be at Michigan and have those resources yep. and this facility and this and that. And it, yeah, yeah, we he, didn't get him Pat White in time though. He was yeah, Denard. Yeah, it was a year, probably yeah. a year too late. Yeah. yeah, a year too late. It's, it'll definitely always be the cautionary tale that any athletic director who's hiring for Michigan's football position will look at because yeah, he didn't get any support here from no, the, that was from the Michigan community. I mean, yeah, the Lloyd like, Carr on his way out telling guys to transfer yeah. if you believe that stuff, which that's kind of how it played out. So yeah. It se- yeah, it seems like that happened, but yeah. Anyway, um, all right. I'm just, this is a this is going to be a simple like yes or no question. You can elaborate on it as much as you want. We're going to shift to basketball now for just a little bit. We'll come back. With well, football on that mark, I'm going to go get another members mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scott! The PR pe- the PR people from Walmart will be calling him so soon. I'm sure. Isn't that where that's from? Maybe saying I don't know. Wherever the where the hell that water's from. Um. So the, I, this is a uh, it's How it's been floating. Like it? It's great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Watch Sports Illustrated call me and tell me, we actually have a contract with Smart Water, so if you could tell that old guy who would just stop doing that shit. (laughs) Stop drinking the cheap water. Stop doing that nonsense on camera. Um, If there is such a thing, then find that out for me so I can (laughs) back the company. Look Look at this guy. Zach Besaw from the ropes. Looks like you've got room for one more guy on the show. I don't want to hear it. You were supposed to be here, and and you're you're choosing not to be. So I'm gonna block you. And uh, no, he sees what a good time it is. Put him in timeout. Um. All right. Here's here's the question. We'll go right down the road. Nick, you go first. You're the basketball guy among us, and then we'll we'll go to Dan. We'll go to Eric. We'll let Dad finish it out. If you have an easy button, you can push it right now. No job search. No nothing. Push the button. John Beeline is the coach today. Do you push the button, Nick? Oh God, this that's a hard one because the the, oh, the <laughs> memories would say yes, but it's his age. Seventy-one it's his, years old. It's his age that gets me. Like he's seventy-one years old, and and I heard somebody say it the other day: the things that drove him out of the game back when he left yeah. are worse yep. now than Way what they were yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. So I, I guess yeah. if, that is true. If you signed him to like a few year deal and said hey we're, you're coming in here to like get us to this next guy who we have in line maybe yeah. but to just say we're gonna hand it over to you and you're the guy for the next 10 years i you might not live another 10 years i mean yeah. he hopefully does but it that's oh, that's a me, lot to me you gotta go younger all right dan i'm gonna say no to same thing age uh for me like he he did a great job here there's no question about it it was fun during those years but he didn't coach during the nil era yeah, you know, during the transfer portal era, he was gone before that ever hit. Like things are crazier now, and he's that. It's this is not going to be an overnight rebuild. Give me somebody young. Don't give me any of this Michigan Michigan man crap. Just find <laughs> a good basketball coach who's young and bring him in. That's I mean that's where I'm at. I, I don't know who that guy is to be honest. Yeah, with you. I really don't know. But find me somebody younger, way younger. Yeah, all right, Eric. Yeah, I say no, not because of his age, but because of the NIL landscape. If he was yeah. disillusioned before about what it took to keep kids in the program and recruiting them as their high schoolers, I don't think he'll want to recruit college players just to keep them right. in the fold still. Yeah, and Dad, I I mean, these guys gave some pretty good arguments. I saw you throwing the, the go blue up there, but. Yeah, no, I, I would also say no, to be honest. John Beeline is yeah. 10 not, years older than you, so much- Dad. Right. Not so much because of his age, but because of the NIL stuff. Yeah, and the one and done. I don't even like college basketball anymore because of the one and done. You can't you can't get attracted to a team. You can't get it's hard. No team favorites. No yeah. psycho yeah. tees. No, you know yeah. those guys that you you you, you think like has he been at that school for nine years? You like you don't see that much anymore. Right. There are right. a few here and there, but the women's I would game say, is better at star building right now than the men's. Game. Yeah. Yeah, are, I, right? I would say I would say no to I, I to Nick's point. If there was some like weird caveat where you could say like Beeline is the band aid for two years, like he's gonna steady the ship for two years. Yep. There's no way he's going beyond that. And we'll do a 
you know, we'll turn over every stone for two years to find his his replacement, then then maybe. But I'm with you. Like he he left like pretty surprisingly because of the changes and the the recruiting yeah. was so because he left he left Dan. You're right. Before nil was a thing. Before transfer portal was a thing. He left because. You had guys like Will Wade at LSU on the phone saying, like, I gave $500,000 for that kid, and then the next he's still coaching. And the guy, Sean Miller, out of Arizona is like, I paid a million bucks for DeAndre Ayton. Look at my stud, and he's still coaching. Like, he was like, I'm done with this, man. I don't do none of that shit, and I can't get ahead because it's just yeah. the NCAA just allows it all to happen, and he was just fed up with it. And so now – And Gordon what Miller college athletes are turning into are NBA yeah. athletes, and how do you handle them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't go very well either. His experiment with the Cavs, and then he was with the Pistons with the back, you know, front office for a little while, and now he's any just, any votes for Jalen yeah. Rose? I don't. No, no I just know Scott. I think you got to go through each. I think you got to give a run for each one of the Fab Five just to <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah, that's what, that's just, give, just give them all a shot, right? <laughs> Ray let's, Jackson. Let's just like, take all five of them. Let's just put all he'd five be of them. Go on with even five less head coaches. So. Yeah, Joe, I, I, I might have won more than eight games this year if they tried that out. <laughs> Let me yeah, add, so hey, bad. Serious that's question a good here, point. Though. <laughs> serious question here, though. If if Howard takes the year off because of his health, because of his health, is he back next year? No, I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. it's you don't think they would have given him a pass and said, "Hey, you." He took the whole year off, didn't coach the team at all. Oh, if he had done that already yeah, yeah, this year, yes, yes. oh, he took this season yeah. off because I've heard some reports where they kind of told him like, "Hey, maybe you should take the whole year off," but he really wanted to come back and coach these guys. That's an interesting point. You know, yeah. maybe say yeah. Martelli, look, this sucks for you, but just do it, and, and right. everybody's back. <sighs> that's that's. Well, here, here's the deal. There certainly would have been nobody calling for him to be fired if they went that route like there was right. this year. He wouldn't yeah. have even been involved. It's like, oh, his heart, you know, he's got to get better, which I, I can't imagine the, the the toll that took on him. I know coaching is very, very stressful, dude. At that level, I can't even imagine. And he's doing it with a bum heart and trying to get better and missing the first 20, 15 games or whatever it was. And even missed a couple down the stretch where he was just like gone and like, Martelli coaches and then he's back and I don't know, man. It was no. a weird year and a lot of that's for a the lot hard, of reasons. That's the hard part because I think the 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 Michigan fan and all of us just wanted it to work so bad. Yeah, there's no right. doubt. Everybody just oh, yeah. wanted it, you know, and it's it's unfortunate. Well, and me it as a fan, out. I don't I, I mean I don't even put it all on Juwan. No, I, I mean yeah, obviously he's so the head things. guy, but I mean NILs bit him in the behind, you know. I mean yep. it, it's it's killed him. When he he was first very, came here, he looked like maybe one of the best recruiters in the country. Yeah. And then he now was very, you give him money and he's, he can't get anybody to come. Well, he was very come, candid. He, he was very candid year. about, about yeah. we had a sit down with him one time and he was very open and candid about like, we need better NIL stuff. Like he just flat out said it. Like he was not sugarcoating it at all. He's Michigan like, I, I can't compete. I cannot compete with yeah. like, I yeah. need more. He and that's it. tough, man. Yeah, he was talking yeah, about that's, Michigan, yeah, Hunter Michigan Dickinson. Said, yeah. NIL. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's tough, man. That's really hard. Dan, to Dan's point, you had some guys that left early that maybe shouldn't have left early. You know, Musa Diabate, Caleb Houston, like they're playing, but not a lot. They're not starting. They've been down in the in the G League a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. um, and Jet Howard, had, same thing. Jet Howard's if, been in the G League. It's like, dude, those they, guys would have been stars. More, yeah, if they had more NIL, those guys stick around for maybe two more years, yeah. get the development they need, then make the jump. So this was kind of a weird thing. I talked about this, and I didn't know this until I think I was talking to, like, maybe, like, David Ojabo a few years ago or something. International players can't get NIL money. So Caleb Houston couldn't get any. Hmm. Musa Diabate couldn't get any. Um there was there was one they other. Probably don't have the right visa for it. It was something to do with just not being from like they couldn't get yeah. like o Ojabo. I think talked about it how he wasn't allowed to get any nil money because he wasn't born in the U.S. And yeah, I was like, like they're oh, on well, a student that... visa instead of a work visa. Yep. That changes things quite a bit, you know. If you're you're yeah. talking to like a guy like Diabate, like like Caleb, yeah, Houston. that I could understand. Like you're gonna do yeah. what's best for you and your family. If you're gonna go make some money, then. You're going to do that. And then again, to Dan's point, there's the, the admission stuff. You know, Michigan was supposed to have Terrence Shannon, who went to tear it up at Illinois. They were supposed to have Caleb Love. He goes, he's, he's the player of the year in the Pac-12. And if Hunter Dickinson comes back for some reason, now you've got those three. They're like all-American caliber players. Instead, you know, Juwan's working with these young guys who maybe weren't supposed to play as much this early. And yeah. 
whoever knows what the hell is going on with Doug McDaniel. He can't play road games, but he can play home games. <laughs> I've also never yeah. seen that before. We'll probably never hear what was the story on that. Huh? It was his, I think yeah. it was his grades. He, he was, yeah, he uh, said he something not, about – Was he not allowed to leave the state? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but something happened. Very yeah. strange, and uh, yeah. again, just another on his ankle. And oh, his, his home address is the. Is and the last thing, the last thing, and not talked about as much because he's kind of behind the scenes. But the John Sanderson stuff, the strength and conditioning, long time right. strength and conditioning yeah. coach at Michigan. We well, had a couple of those issues too, Jawan. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Jawan. You know, he hits a coach for Wisconsin. Yeah. Like, you, you just. Yeah. Yeah. You look back and you start to stack all the stuff up, and that leads me right into my next question. Because you see it in the comments. We know he played for the Fab Five. We all loved the hire when he got there for various reasons. Again, I had my, I had my concerns about you know just the the job itself. But the dude, you couldn't have found someone better, and and he did recruit really well coming out of the gate. How do you, how do you feel hearing the sentence that? And I, I saw it in the comments, but this is literally what's what's going to be said now. Juwan Howard is in charge of the worst basketball season ever at Michigan. Like, that yeah. sucks. Yeah. Also, he was also life. Big Ten Coach of the Year at, yeah. at one point in his tenure. Like, right. that's, I'm telling you, everybody in, in the Big – I shouldn't just say the Big Ten, but everybody in college sports, like, you're one season away from being Juwan Howard. Yeah. Right. That's the way NIL is. You're one yeah, year away from it. You know, and he, I'm not in this camp. Like, I do think it was time to go, but I've heard some people say, like, this could be Jawan Harwood's Jim Harbaugh COVID year. You know, in a couple yeah. of years, they could be winning a natty. Yeah. Not, I don't think I buy into that, but, I mean, a lot of people wanted Jim out after that year. Go I, on, did. Eric. <laughs> I did. I did. I <laughs> did. You, you realize Michigan went 15-0 and 0 in football, won the national championship, and then on the basketball side, lost – as many games as they ever have before the head coach is fired. Both programs seem to be in polar ends of the spectrum. It's like, it's and crazy both how looking far for a coach they are. at the end yeah. of the season. And both looking for a coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's so, yeah. Or Harbaugh, it's a little different because Harbaugh, like the, the 2020 season was bad. They went two and four. It was, they looked awful. The culture was busted. But prior to that, he was, you know, right. Harbaugh was still winning like 80% of his games. Right. Like Juwan's decline has just been, there hasn't been a pop back up. It's just right. been steady going down. And this no. year, it just, it hit rock bottom. You can't, you can't lose 24 games in a season and go, dude, two and 19 to close out the year. Like, that's hard to come back from. It's and getting in fist fights with your, you know, one of your most valuable staffers who's been there five times as long as you have. And uh, yeah, man, it's just a lot of yeah, stuff, stuff, man. A lot of stuff. Oh. So Dan, you said it earlier and I'm, did I do this for a job? And I'm, a, I'm ashamed to admit, I can't, t I can't name probably five guys who I would say, go hire him. Like there's a few yeah. who I know, like, you know, Nate Oates is one of the popular names. He's yeah. the head coach at Alabama. Yeah, Shaka yeah. smarts name was thrown around yeah, last yeah. time when they hired Juwan. And now he's, doing a really good job at Marquette. So there, you know, there's some names that have been around college basketball for a little while. I'll I've go in reverse Collins order. In this time. Yeah. Chris Collins from Northwestern is another one. Cause the yeah, academic school and might yeah. be able to transfer over a little bit. I'm going to go the other direction this time. We'll end with our basketball guys. So I'll go dad first, Eric, Nick, uh, Eric, Dan, Nick, not who, okay. Not who would you get, but if you had like one trait, like that, the coach had to have an elite level of, like, I don't know what that was with Juwan because he had never been a coach before. I know a lot of people thought he's going to be an elite recruiter. He's from Chicago. He, he did this NBA thing. He's been around LeBron. He's boys of D Wade. Like he had a lot of cachet, but, and it looked then, like you said it earlier, it looked like it was going to pay off. He had the number one recruiting class one of the years he was at Michigan, but it wasn't sustained. So I don't know what, you know, when Juwan got there, if you could have said, all right, name me the one thing he's elite at. I don't really know if you could have given an answer. You would have hoped it was recruiting, but there was no there was no background information to support that. So, Dad, if you were hiring Michigan's basketball coach right now, what would be the one thing was a, a non-negotiable? He's got to be this or have done this or be elite at what is he's that? Gotta, he's got to be able to teach him how to play defense. Whew, Boom. man, amen. <laughs> amen. They that were atrocious mine. on defense Horrible. this year at yes. times. Horrible. Horrible. Defense and free throws. What did I say when I was coaching? <laughs> <laughs> right? It, it, you, you do win games when you can do those things at a high level. Right. Eric, right. what do you got? 
Yeah, I think Michigan needs an X's and O's junkie. Someone yeah. that just lives, ble- bleeds, breathes the game, all of that. Now I've got Shaka a Shaka Smart. Kind of Shaka stay. Smart. You look at the rookie season averages of Victor Wembenyama and LeBron James, there's like 20 years in between that time frame. But their numbers are almost exactly the same. Mm. The, the funny thing is the game looks remarkably different. There's wings spread a- across the perimeter. Big guys don't really have developed post moves nowadays. It's totally different. I want someone that can acclimate and adjust to that environment. Someone that is an X's and O's junkie. Find any piece, put it exactly where it needs to be, and it's going to work. Oh, that sounds like John Beeline. Anyway, uh, Dan, <laughs> Dan yeah, what's I'm, your... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join Scott's camp, and I'm going to say defense, too. And I'm, obviously, I was not a Beeline guy, and they had really good defenses under Beeline. Yeah. But, again, the age and all that stuff. And So I don't know who that is, but, yeah, yeah bring me somebody in that can put together. A de- His defense, this, it's not streaky. You know, it's you gonna. That's what I was gonna say. It's gonna give you a chance every night. When yeah. when Juwan came in, I really thought, okay, he's we're gonna be able to bring in the best big guys in the country, and we're gonna yeah. be able to develop them. And like we had big guys, but they they hang out by the three point line. Like they don't play yeah. big guys like Juwan played, so it didn't do us any good. Like it's not yeah. it's not, the, not how the game's played anymore. All right, Mr. Basketball. College. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it, it's like it's kind of it's like that. I mean, positionless basketball is like the you know the hip term now, and guys don't bang in the post. Like, yeah, they don't play like Juwan played. I don't, I can't remember. I think did Juwan shoot two threes his entire career? I think that's a stat. <laughs> I have to look, but it was yeah, it's nothing like it is now. Nick, Mister Basketball, what's your one non-negotiable? It's hard for me because I coach at the high school level, and we can kind of rein people in <laughs> and just say, hey, this is what you're doing. Um, <laughs> because I would say defense as well. The problem is. You then got to go out and recruit, and you yeah. got to find kids that want to do that. Yeah. And not every kid wants to go out there and play defense for 40 minutes. They don't want to do yeah. it. Everybody's attracted to, I'm going to get 10 three point attempts a game. Um, I want to be flashy down. on offense. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. it, it, so it's going to be tough because you want to establish a culture in a cultureless environment now where kids want to come in, play one year. If you're not playing mm-hmm. the style that they want to play, they're going to leave. Um, mm-hmm. I don't yeah. envy. I don't envy who's take whoever takes this job. Yeah, you see you know, all these like big time coaches leaving because of this stuff. Like Jay Wright's not coaching anymore. I mean, dude, I can't believe Izzo is still somehow hanging on with the way he coaches. He, sh- but... he shouldn't be. <laughs> so, yeah. um, this is not I, his best performance. That's for sure. Yeah, not his best year. I mean, I I could get on board with defense. I still think you need to. One of Juwan's biggest downfalls was he didn't he didn't recruit shooters. And that the game is you, you can't win if you can't shoot. And he didn't have enough three point shooters any of his years, really, except for maybe that first year when that was pretty much all Beeline's guys. All you know, he had all Isaiah years. Livers. And he had, yeah, Beeline always had shooters. He'd find them, he'd bring them in, and they, you know, they they made some big big shots for him. Going all the way back to Trey Burke and Stauskas and a bunch of other those white dudes that could just put up threes, dude. And they could shoot it. Um, Juwan never really seemed to prioritize that. And I think that was a big problem. I don't know why dudes couldn't play defense. Like Nick said, some guys don't want to do it, but you can. I don't know. We're we're all forty year old dudes that came up at a different time, but like you could learn how to play defense. I maybe you yeah, can't learn that anymore. I don't know. Thank 18, you. 18, Thank 19 you. Thank you very much. Kids, they Thank just you. they just go. I got to score twenty points a game and get. To I know. Like, playing defense ain't gonna get me there. <laughs> that's that's that. it. So. My, when I thought about this, I'm, you guys did a better job answering it probably than I did. I, I Mine was just much more sweeping. I wouldn't even look at anybody unless they had been a head coach before. Like that's, that's number one. I don't want, I don't want some guy who's been an incredible assistant. He's like, Oh, he's an up and comer. He's been in charge of this part of our program. He's great at that. Like I give me a guy who has been a head coach for a handful of years. That's kind of going back to the Sharon argument before yeah. that I said, but I'm with you. Defense, I, I would I would try to prioritize shooting more than Juwan did. You could say recruiting, but again, with Michigan's admissions and NIL and all, it's hard, dude. Like Juwan went from recruiting big time guys to like, you know, the last couple of classes have been not strong, and now they're not even at the program anymore. They've yeah. they've yeah. transferred out. Um, so yeah, that's it's a lot, it's a lot Scott, easier to get into MSU. We have more it's men. Tough. On the podcast Scott, right now than there does are this hire have to be a Michigan yes. man, Scott? Or is basketball uh, different? It doesn't, I think basketball's different. Basketball, basketball is different. different. Okay. Basketball is different. Wanted to see where you were at on that. It's an interesting point different. to be made. I don't even know who would like who would. I don't even know. Yeah. yeah. No. Nobody. That'd be a good. There was uh one of the oh, what the heck was his name? Jamal he Crawford. Was, 
He was a. <laughs> I do like Jamal Crawford. He seems to have a little bit <laughs> more of a too. coking mind. <laughs> but anyway, Juwan How or who's <laughs> a Jalen Rose? I just feel like he, he's done some really good things in his community. He's got a high school like that he runs, but like I don't know. He just I don't know if he has the mentality to be a coach. I could see Jamal Crawford maybe doing it, but um. Anyway, all right, we'll finish out with football. We'll do about another 10 minutes. Nick, I thought maybe you were going to have – you're just having too much fun. That's what it is. I thought Nick might have to leave early, but he's here. We're 55 minutes in, and uh, we'll start putting a bow on it here pretty quick. So the biggest I, – I think the biggest question mark going into the football season is obviously the quarterback position. When you go from J.J., who goes 27 or 28 and one, whatever it is, and can do it all. He's athletic enough to do this. He can throw it this way. He can throw it that way. He's a leader. He's like the golden boy. He's like the poster child for who you want playing quarterback for your team. And now Michigan's got to find somebody who's, I don't know. I mean, I guess Jack Tuttle's your most experienced guy. If you want to watch film on anybody, he's about the only one you can do that with. Maybe not necessarily who, because I don't, I think it's still a little bit fluid. We'll see after spring ball if Michigan jumps back in the portal and tries to find another quarterback. So we'll, we'll just go right there. Do you think Michigan's quarterback is on the roster right now, or do you hope that they do go find somebody a little more established in the uh, in the Orgy, orgy in the end zone. I, I don't think people are going to – I think a lot of people are going to feel that way, but, Dad, how's he look throwing it? He can throw it. <laughs> Dad must have a pass to the practices that I was not aware of, uh, because I don't think I've seen him. I don't think he. I don't think he had a pass attempt. If that's not, is that accurate? Oh, he ran it a bunch of times, but anyway, he didn't so have. He didn't he have a pass. I don't think he did. I think they throw. called one that he ended up keeping. They called one. Yeah, he can throw it they far. Called one that he was supposed to throw, and he, and he didn't end up throwing. Yeah, I think so, that's it. Dan, what do you, I mean, what are your thoughts? I mean, you, you went to a lot of games this year. You but, saw some of those dudes play in garbage time. I'm going to answer your question by not answering your question. Um, <laughs> I, right. As much as quarterback is the, the king in football, like I don't know that that's the biggest thing. Yeah. I mean, wh what? Beyond JJ, like what did Jim Harbaugh do it with? Yeah. Right? Keep yeah, building well, that offensive line. Keep pounding that rock. Keep playing defense. I mean, you got to have a quarterback. Don't get me wrong. But does it have to be an elite? passer you know i think it could be orgy i think it could be tuttle i think it could be oh, any of them i yeah. think this nope. team like the key to not having this team just absolutely tank after winning a national championship like go out there and win nine ten games next year i don't think it necessarily resolves around that quarterback as much as you might think yeah tough schedule, uh, tough schedule uh very no tough doubt. schedule compared to this past season but you're you, you know you make a point because everybody always – like the argument all year was like, just imagine J.J. playing for USC or imagine him playing for Texas. Yeah. It's like, well, he doesn't. He plays for Michigan, and he threw it 11 times, and they won by 30. So there you go. You know, like that was that was every week. And they talked about it like the starters didn't play in the fourth quarter till like week nine or something. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not going to have – they lost a ton. You know, 18 guys at the combine, 20-plus making it to the NFL. The roster is very, very different. But – to your point, it's probably going to be a lot of the same kind of stuff. I would think, I don't know. Nick is, are you cool with, all right, Jack Tuttle, seventh year senior, let's see what you got or orgy run the ball 17 times a game. I mean, what does it look like? I think the quarterback is on the roster. I, I don't know with Tuttle. The, the thing that is intriguing about orgy is the, the amount of pressure he would take off Edwards in the run game. Yeah. Because you can't focus on the running back now. With J.J. in there, we knew J.J. could keep it, but they weren't going to do it because they were protecting him. He was a little bit smaller. Orgy's a beast. Like, when he when he keeps the ball and he's running, he's running linebackers over. You remember mm – -hmm. well, we all remember what Jalen Milrow looked like for Alabama. Orgy's right. 15 pounds heavier than him. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. you get the right coach in there working with him that can put the right game plan in and says, hey, you don't have to make the pinpoint J.J. McCarthy – pass here and there but we're going to do a lot of read option with you you're going to read this one guy and hit this short pass i think they can be successful with that to dan's point because you're going to have a good defense on the other side yeah take the air out of the ball run it make the manageable passes manage the game with him and i think i don't know i i, I that to me is what i'm most looking for forward to um and he's going to be going against guys in practice that are going to be better than most defenses he's going to yeah, see no and you, you even yeah. you even asked the 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 i did think brandon you may have talked about it um the guys that were on the first team defense would talk about going against him yeah uh you know in practice when he was simulating 
other guys. Like he's he's tough. He's the real deal. I mean, yeah, 6'3", 235, you know, just yoked. I mean, he's that's what I was gonna say. Like you ran JJ yeah, two, three, maybe eight times a game if he if he's really getting after it with his life. You could run Orgy 15 times a game and he's gonna be fine. And yeah. so I mean, Edwards have the same number of carries. Yeah, yeah. Literally. And you see that, you know, you do see that with some programs uh, when they have a real weapon there. I mean, Mill Rowe is a good example of it for Alabama. Well, not only is he bigger and he's going to be more depend or more uh, hold up better to the pounding, but also like there's not the drop off there was from JJ to whoever was next to. So if he does get yeah. injured, like it's not like any of those other guys can't step in and do the same kind of thing he's doing. Yeah. So then, you know, you didn't yeah, want to lose JJ, but you know, yeah. He, he, if he gets banged up and somebody else got to start a game or two, it won't be as huge of a drop off. Yeah, Eric, is it orgy or is it? Are, are you shopping the portal? No, I'm not doing either of those. Um, I oh. need to see more from Jaden Davis, obviously. Um, oh, the freshman! Who wow. knows? We we uh, we've seen Alex Orgy run a whole lot. If mm -hmm. he was a great passer, I think that would be part of the plan up to this point already. We'd be familiar with it. I think Jaden Davis is a big question mark. Um, he could be the answer. It, there would be growing pains, but we're expecting growing pains no matter what. There's a difficult schedule next year. Maybe try it out. Yeah, it's it's not the craziest thought because like you're, they're not going fifteen and oh, do that schedule they're is not. it's brutal. We're gonna get to that. Is gonna be the last thing, Dad. Do you want to chime in real quick? And <laughs> I know you said orgy in the end zone. Do you have yeah, anything I, else to add? Any of some some <laughs> substance here? I'm gonna. <laughs> I would have him be the starter for the first several games, mm -hmm. Orgy, Alex Orgy. Mm -hmm. And then when they're up 35 to nothing, bring in the freshman, let him get let him get some a lot of good reps. Well, week two is Texas. So well, I know that, but I know gonna that. Need to, got, gonna... if anybody I in the country and if, if anybody in the country doesn't say Michigan has a tougher schedule, they're they're high. Yeah. So By the way. By the way, Alex Orgy from Texas. Just throw oh, that out there. Okay. Uh, we've seen Jim. No, I, I know Jim Harbaugh's not there anymore, but we've seen them highlight. Play. Yeah. Remember Roman Wilson Texas, when Hawaii came Texas to town? Is, yeah. Yeah. Texas, Texas being the second be, game, but it is. You know, it's not a not a Big Ten game, so. Yeah. 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 Texas. I, Texas. I play Alex. One of those. Play Alex. You know, build up the build up the lead, and let the freshmen come in and get good good reps against good teams. And then Brandon, what's your move at quarterback? Michigan. Go with the first I, I mean, I I love the idea of Alex Orgy being even a a, a sixty five percent you know reliable passer. Like to Nick's point, you don't I don't need an ear hole whistler like JJ threw against Ohio State and Michigan State. But can you do yeah. the checkdowns? Can you play the screen game? Can you get it to Samaj on a bubble? Can you hit somebody on a slant? Can hit you Colson. throw it fifty yards? Yeah, can you hit Colston Loveland up the seam a couple times? Yeah. And can you throw it 50 yards down the field three times a game? He's got a big arm. There's no question about his arm strength, but yeah, they, you know, and I wonder about that. You know, now you've got Kirk Campbell, a former quarterbacks coach, calling the plays. You've got Sharon back there now instead of Jim Harbaugh. You know, did, they didn't take very many shots downfield last year with JJ, and he's looking like he's going to be a top five pick in the NFL. Yeah. So I, I just four. wonder. Pick I wonder four. how different it looks. You know, with Orgy or, you know, the Tuttle doesn't have the arm strength that J.J. does. Uh, Davis Warren certainly doesn't or whoever it might be back there. I will say this, Eric. I don't I don't hate your point. We were, we were down there and we were allowed to see. You guys remember, J.J. looked, he looked pretty thin. Uh, he's up to like 219 now, but in his uniform, running around, he looks a little spindly. He looked like he needed to go on such a diet standing next to Jaden Davis. Dude was so skinny. Like, his, his like spandex right. underneath was like baggy yeah. his shoulder pads were like moving on him i'm like oh that's a freshman right there and you know there will be he'll change quite a bit from now until september but way, so. yeah it was it was amazing to see because you always think of jj as looking kind of thin at you know 6'3 205 i think he played at something like that yeah. and then next to Jaden davis he looked like a bodybuilder i'm like dude that's the difference right there between a junior and a freshman but We'll see. Jane Davis, talented kid. Obviously, the kid they wanted all through the whole cycle. They got him, and you know we'll see what that ends up looking like. All right, last but not least here, we kind of started touching on it a little bit, and then we'll get out of here and let these guys go live their lives. Sharon's first year, we mentioned the schedule. It's got USC. It's got Oregon. It's got UCLA. It's got Washington. It's got Texas. That's insane. Like, 
the run of games that they play, some of them are out west, you know, with the new the new Big Ten teams. You do bring Texas to Ann Arbor. Dad said it, you know, you're high if you don't think that's the toughest schedule. It's got all the playoff teams represented except for Alabama. It's yeah. crazy. Um, now the playoff does get 12 in. So what – we'll we'll do the five-panel question thing again. What is acceptable or what do you think for Sharon's first year? You can give a record guess. You can say it's got to be this. He's got to beat Ohio State again. He's got to make the 12 team. Like, what is acceptable for Sharon in year one? And what do you think? Is it the same? How am I going to word this? Is your expectation the same thing as what's acceptable? Because I think those can be two different things. Like, he's got to get here. I don't know if he's going to, though. Let's go. Eric, go ahead and get get us started with that one. I think with the expanded playoff, he needs to make the playoffs again four straight years for Michigan. But if he misses it and it's close, Michigan has like a good argument to make the playoffs and they're one of the first couple teams out. I think that's fine. If he misses the playoffs and really the Wolverines didn't have a chance, he's going to feel pretty uncomfortable heading into next season. All right, dad, what do you think? I mean, you think the, you've toned down the slappiness a little bit, but you usually pick Michigan to go 12 and all you happen to be right last year, but I, was, I don't know. Do you, do you think that, you, do, is that what you're what you're seeing already right now? They are going to repeat as national champs. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> they may lose. It. They may lose a game, but I don't. I don't know. I I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised because the defense is still going to be stellar. And I think oh, you might even... see might see the pen repeat of the Penn State game all year long. We didn't even talk about Wink. I wanted to talk about, talk about and I, Wink, and I forgot. I forgot. Over That'll be we'll, we'll we'll put that on the yeah. back burner. Their defense is going to be stellar. It really is. They uh, they they may never throw they may never throw the ball the whole game, <laughs> all all season long. So, Ten passes all season. Uh, They're going to make pe- teams stop them from running, and I don't think anybody can. So just a ca- just a caveat here. I was looking this up while Eric was talking about it last year. The final playoff rankings before before the playoffs started. So Michigan number one. Uh, Alabama down to number four and in between Washington and Texas. Number 13, so they would have been on the outside looking in, was LSU, and they were the first team with three losses. So conceivably a team with three losses could maybe get in. Last year it wouldn't have happened, but, you know, depending on how that shakes out, you might get get a couple in. Um, Michigan's not going to lose three times, so they'll definitely be in the playoff. So, I mean, if that's (laughs) that's what you – I mean, that's not crazy, but – I like it. Ooh, 14 to 1. 14 right. to 1 repeat champs. Dan, what Mark do you it. see? Market. Well, I don't think I'm as optimistic as Scott. <laughs> I do think we will have a top 10 defense. I mean, maybe top five, top six, even. Um, be just because of the returning starters, and you got the OG in there now. <laughs> I wish <laughs> we would have talked about Wink, man. I'm yeah. bummed we didn't. He's been, he's been fun so far. Yeah, he has um, been. <clears throat> and and I think I and I I think all that aside about it being fun, I think that's true. I don't think there'll be a major drop off defensive scheme wise. So, I mean, they should be able to just pick up running where they left off. But I think the thing you got to ask your question to to answer your questions, you got to ask yourself, what would the, what would the expectations be if Jim Harbaugh had stayed? Yeah. It's tough, man. (laughs) You expected a drop off. I mean, with this schedule and that much loss, (laughs) <laughs> nice job cj yeah what does mr brown have in that water bottle i you know I mean, we're trying to fi- we're trying to figure about even for the league come on CJ. even if jim water. stayed like you know I'm, yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm calling for at least two numbers losses mark. if jim stayed numbers mark yeah so yeah i mean eight or nine wins and i don't think you gotta i don't think you can you know i don't think you can like run him out of town yeah so every reasons. year Every year before we have Nick kind of close this out, every year you look at Michigan's schedule and you kind of say like, okay, the season is like, it's really like three games. And you just hope they don't trip up and lose one of the stupid ones to Maryland or Indiana or something. Last year it was like, okay, Penn State, Ohio State. Uh, I don't know who the, who was the third one maybe last year. Uh, you kind of can throw Michigan State on there. I don't know. They've been pretty bad. but But this year it's like five or six games. It's Texas at home. It's... USC, USC, Oregon. It's at Washington, Oregon at home, and at Ohio State. It's five games if yep. you don't even count Michigan State or well, they're not going to lose to Ohio. It's in Columbus. I mean, realistically, so, okay. though, you got to say you got to the, the other seven. You have to win. 
Yeah. And then right. out of those, out of those five, you got to get me two or three of them. Yep. And that gets so you to a nine, that gets you to a nine or ten win season. And to me, yeah. coming off of a hey, your first year, you got the keys to the Ferrari, like we talked about. I think Sharon gets a little more leash with it being yep. his first year and losing all the guys to the NFL draft like they did. Um, I think I think that would meet a lot of people's expectations if you can get nine or ten wins. Ten wins so, puts him in a good spot. Yeah. yeah oh, no ten doubt. wins, that's that's almost for sure in the playoff. Nine and three might be, but might, you know, might not be. And, and then again, it's, it's, you know, is it, a, I don't even want to say the words, but is it a 25 point loss to Ohio state? Like that's not cool after yeah, what you've done the last say, three years. Ten wins are created equally. It's exactly right. You, that's exactly you, you, right. You win 10 games and one of those, one, one of those wins is Ohio state. They'll probably that's, start, that's, they'll probably start erecting a statue now. You know? Yeah, exactly. So if, if he gets blown out by them, it's yeah. a very different 10 win season. Yeah. So yeah, Texas. Texas is obviously your your one tough game that doesn't count against your your conference standing, you know. So that's that's dude. That schedule is awesome. Texas, SC, Washington, Oregon, Ohio State, Michigan. That's freaking sweet, dude. The only cupcake because really Fresno State's not a pushover either. That's the opener is Arkansas State. That's that's the only like layup on the whole on the whole thing. I mean, yeah, Ohio Illinois. State. Two of those games we keep pointing to, like SC is not going to be the same. They're going to take a drop by. They lost like five games or something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We act like they're this juggernaut. With Caleb, yeah, with Caleb, four games, five games, and then Washington lost. I mean, they lost their coach. They lost their quarterback. Let's not pretend they're going to be the same Washington team. But it's you're going to you're going to Washington, so right. Yeah, playing in Seattle's tough. Yes, and on the flip side, SC coming all the way to Ann Arbor. Yeah, uh, it's early. And that, can you imagine if that was like mid-November? If I know. Snow, I keep thinking that too with these new teams coming in. That's it's like you need to come in the snow. Absolutely. Playoffs though. Oregon's coming in the beginning of November, but it, it gets a little cold up there. It's not quite the yeah. same as Southern Cal coming. But the one thing yeah. I hate about the new playoff though is if you win a bye, like you don't get a home game. You don't get your home game. I know. Like you, everyone you else, get, like yeah, I get a bye and everyone else gets a home game. I don't get one. And what about next yeah. year when they go to fourteen? You you want to be team yeah. number five? Just to get a home yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, because it would yeah. to have. Good point. I uh, wanted to point, play man. bowl games in Ann Arbor for so long. Like, it is going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. The schedule is sweet. Um, damn, we missed. I, I I didn't write down Wink. I'm mad. I wrote down Sharon's staff, and I didn't yeah. put Wink on there specifically, and that's my bad. We will talk about Wink Martindale next week. I don't know if these guys are going to be back. I hope, Dude, there are 600 people watching us right now. <laughs> that's wild. Hey, I- that's I can a, do it. Love you all. Love every one of you. I can love do it, but I'll be in St. Petersburg. I'll be doing it from the beach. <laughs> well, that's up to you. Nick. I will not demand you uh, <laughs> jump on for that one. But I, dude, for the first time, five of us on here. I think it went real smooth. We had six, five, six, seven hundred people watching. That's incredible. So shout out to everybody who sat along and listened to us for an hour because I, you know I don't know. I felt awesome. like we did a good job. I enjoyed it. Hopefully everybody else did too. That's a bigger awesome. number than we used to do before. And yeah. I, that's. That's encouraging. It's off, season. it's off season. Like spring ball's not even really going on. I had, uh, 100, and I had 150 of my students log in. Yeah, hardly. Yeah, uh, Nick says, if you, watch the class, if you want to pass the class, you will watch this podcast tonight. Yep. <laughs> the whole the whole village of the Lothrop is in here right now. Whole town. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that shirt that's pretty good. Awesome. All right, fellas. That's the show. We will be back again. I will be back for sure. Maybe Eric, maybe Scott. We'll see with Dan and Nick. They've got lives and kids and businesses to run. And also Nick's got, I don't know. Are you coaching anything else, Nick, or is that it? No, I quit. Okay. They're excellent. Excellent. So there you go. We'll see who's back next week. Might even recruit another guy or two. We'll see. But thank you so much for watching. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week on Wednesday.